Hi everyone, it's Sherry, and I thought I'd do a watercolor today. I'm uh, going to attempt to do some wildflowers in a terracotta pot. So what I have here is some arches, cold press paper, and I've measured off our parameters using a 8 by 10 double matted mat and just lightly drew out the center of my mat. Now, if you're not planning on framing this or matting it, then, you know, you don't need to do that. But just in case, I mean, you never know. You could pull out a masterpiece and wish you had, you know, made your boundaries here. So, so with uh, just a regular pencil, I'm going to lightly draw out what will be my my vase, my terracotta pot, just a rough estimate. I do this just to guide me so that I don't end up short on space either with for the flowers or for the pot. And I'm going to put some tall branches and flowers. So I want to uh, sort of Draw in some lines here for that too. And we're going to erase these lines when we're done. Okay, so now I have a rough idea of where I'm going. Sometimes I just go for the gusto and hope for the best. Sometimes I try to give myself a little bit of a guide here. I'm going to use a number five round brush. Now you don't have to go out and buy, you know, these expensive Grumbacher brushes or just a, a decent brush. You can find them on Amazon. You know, you can get a set of six for maybe $30, $40, and that will do fine. So going to start off. with a rough idea of my pot. Now I've already sprayed my palettes with some water just to get them started. And I'm going to use yellow ochre. And this is uh, this is uh, Windsor & Newton student grade paint. And I like to leave some white space just for me it just adds a bit of interest Now our light is going to come from this direction. So the right side, my right side will be somewhat darker. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna just to uh, add a little interest so our color isn't, you know, just a bland kind of brown. Okay. 
and just ever so slight raw umber. Okay, that will do. And it's going to be a line and wash, so I am going to come in with my micron pen at the end and outline. Okay, now we're going to come in. I think I will change to a, let's go to number two, I would think, one or two. Wet my brush. And come in with what will be our branches and I think I'm going to use uh, let's start with bird's head I'm trying not to be too particular about my lines You know, I don't want to I want some shape to them. I'm just being aware of um, proportions. Okay, that should pretty well suffice. Now before I fill these in with, uh, they're going to look a bit like lupins or snapdragons, I'm going to come in and put in my fuller singular flowers. So I think I will start with a, uh, let's start with a yellow. This cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow. Um, and we're just trying to put in the idea of flowers here. Same idea with cerulean blue, I think. Quite a wet brush, but uh, Now it's just starting from the center. As I said, just the idea of flowers. Now if we want, we can come in and make those a little darker. But for now, we'll leave that. We'll see how our little composition is coming out as we go along. I'm going to use a... Uh, and Graham, it's purple. Actually, I think I'll do the purple with some cerulean blue. I just, that makes such a pretty color. Okay. Actually, maybe we'll make these. Not being too fussy.
Another one on the side, I think. I'm not lining them up directly across from each other and try to, you know, get a little more random shape. All right. Let's come in with one flower that color. Uh, uh, what the heck, let's add another one. I think it's pretty color. Try and be aware of my composition as a whole. Okay, let's leave that at that. Let's introduce sort of a mustard color. Uh, Should we bring some, they're wildflowers, so yeah, let's bring some red in here. I'm going to mix red with a cadmium orange. Oh, this is a daring color. We don't want it to take over, so. Okay, let's do a few more stems. Uh, let me see. Let's try a listen. Crimson. This is Daniel Smith. All right. I think we need. What do we need? I'm okay with the blue, I think. Let's just go with the straight purple. This is uh, Purple Lake. Windsor and Newton, the student grade again. And we're going to put one right here. That's pretty strong.
we need another flower here. I think I will go in with um, ultramarine only because I want to uh, tone down this a bit. So I'm going to do that with another fairly strong color. Okay, let's go back and do some more of our stems. Going back to the number two brush. I think we could use a little bit more of a you know, a brown. Mixing yellow ochre with raw umber. Maybe another one. All right. Let's bring a little more red in. Well, actually, I think I'm going to use, let me see, yeah, I'm going to come in with the red. This time it's going to be Scarlet, Daniel Smith. And I'll come out with sort of an aquamarine. All right, now we have one more stem here. Hmm. Let's make that a green. How about sap green? Nice sweet green. And I think I'll bring another one over to the left side, my left. Because I like what that added. A 
this is small. Okay. Now we're going to add a few leaves. Now I'm going to make this sap green with Payne's gray to give me an olive gray, or sorry, olive green. And we're just going to throw these in here. A bit of a not too wet a brush. Oh, I see we have another branch here. Let's finish that branch and then we can come back to our to our leaves. Okay, back to our leaves. These are pretty random. And the leaves are sort of a filler too. darker than others. That was a little darker than I would like. Okay. that just about does it for our leaves couple more fill in some spaces here all right now we're going to come in with our micron pen. This is zero one. Oh, 
There we have it. We're going to basically accent our uh, little painting. Indication of outline without, you know, totally outlining it. Oh, need to put some uh, shadow down there. This pen's not the greatest. Let's see what else I have here. A brush. Whoops. I have a number five, which is a little larger than I would normally use, but I don't have another um, pen around, so I'll just be careful. Some indications of sort of circles around our lupin type flowers. A light touch.
All right. Now we're going to come in with a white gel pen. It's a signal uniball. And do some white centers, some white dots in the center of some of these flowers. That's not rolling very well. Let's hold on a sec. It's a little better. All right, we need to bring in some shadow from our pot. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, cerulean blue and probably yellow in the background. touch of yellow. All right, I think we're done. Let's see how it looks. I want to add a little bit more shadow here. better. I think I need to add leather. Well, a few more leaves, I think. Just to make sure we're nicely filled in here. Okay, I think we're done.
Actually, I'm feeling like the pot needs to be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to come in with a mixture of raw umber and burnt sienna. That feels a little better. All right. Okay. We are done. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, pretty simplistic. Probably broke every rule in the book as far as watercolors go. I just do my own thing. You know. I like it. Looks like wildflowers to me. And uh, yeah, so thumbs up would be great, a share, a comment, always nice. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, that would be absolutely wonderful if you would do that. All right, you folks have a great day. Bye for now.